Okay, hello everyone. Uh, my name is Ski Oakenfull and I'm a tutor and course developer at Point Blank Music College. So this is a classic track from Moax. It was released on Moax in 1995. It's built on a main sample by Elgar's Enigma Variations. We're going to look at the, at the kind of chords of that. There's also a kind of uh, a sample from Holst Planets, so we're going to look at that as well. Quite easy these days to take a track and find out what the original samples uh, were. Here are just the, are the main ones, the ones that I'm going to be working with. So we've got this uh, Edward Elgar Enigma Variations that I mentioned before. There's this track called It's a New Day by this band called Skull Snaps, a kind of like 70s funk band. There's a hip-hop track by Intelligent Hoodlum called Arrest the President. Holds the Planets, there's this little string intro. ESG, a kind of like weird punky funk group. And then this track featuring Lolita Holloway, very, very sampled vocalist, and uh, that's from the a cappella of this track uh, called Set Me Free. You know, without further ado, we should actually listen to the track and uh, get an idea of what it sounds like, and then we'll talk about uh, the elements that are contained within the track. So this is the tune. So you can see that I cut up the audio of the track in the arrange window and what this allows me to do is drag these sections into the session view as clips, just like this, and it then allows me to play these as separate scenes. And this is really handy especially when we're deconstructing tracks because it allows us to build up all the sections. So let's start off just having a look at this intro section which is the strings. And this is a direct lift from Elgar. Let's firstly have a look at the chords. Okay, so we're in G natural minor, and this is the scale. We have two flats, B flat, and an E flat. Okay, so let's play through the chords. Uh, first of all, we have a G minor, which is the one chord. Going to a D7 with an A and a bass. Then we have a G minor over B flat, C minor 7 with an A diminished, and then G minor over D, then an E flat major, G7 with a B natural in the bass, C sus 4, C minor, then G minor again, C minor 7, D7, G minor. So here we have a classic 4, 5, one resolving progression at the end. So those are the chords, and Rob Dugan bases the main part of the whole track on the first four chords, which is just this ascending bass line. G, A, B flat, C. So we'll have a look at that in a minute. Let's just start by building up the beat. We're gonna to go to this first section here. So this is the skull snap sample. So I'm just going to drag this over onto a clip here, double click it, and there we go, it brings up the waveform. So we want to try to find the one of this beat so we can actually loop it. Three, four, one, one, two. So we can see it there, just make this a bit bigger. The first thing I'm going to do is to warp it. There we go, and it's defaulted to complex, we could change that, but I'm going to change this algorithm to beats. There we go, and you can see these transient markers here, these little greyed out uh, triangles. If I just hover the mouse over them, you can see them uh, being highlighted. Um, this is the one here, one, two, three, 
for. So I'm just going to right click on this little triangle and I'm going to set 1.1.1 here. It's going to drag over the left loop brace there. And let's just get this in time. I'm going to turn the metronome on. Two, three, four, one. So we want this one here to line up with the start of the second bar. So I'm just going to drag that over. And I'm also going to drag over the loop brace there so it should loop round. Okay, so that's sounding pretty good. What we can actually see is a slight inaccuracy of the drumming, which is all about feel. But the beauty of warping is that we can actually improve that. So you can see on this second beat here, it's slightly before the beat. So what I could do is I can just click either side of that and then just click on this and then just drag it over and then that'll be on the beat. And we can also look at the fourth beat here as well. You can see that that's slightly behind the beat. So let's just drag that over. See this is rushing now, this little hat. Okay, so that's feeling pretty good to me as the main beat. Now let's try working on the sound of it. First of all, I'm going to try some EQ. So I'm just going to uh, put some EQ8 on this and I'm going to try and brighten up a little bit. Yeah, around there I think a little sort of 5k boost is quite nice. On Rob Dugan's version it sounds like he's put some kind of reverb on it. So I'm just going to drag uh, a reverb over. Just take the dry wet level right down. Take the chorus off. Now I'm going to try some compression to really kind of make this beat a little bit punchier. Let's bring down the threshold. I quite like the way that the reverb is affecting that. Take it down a little bit. And if we group all these together now, we can do a kind of before and after. So this is before. Okay, so that's really working. It's definitely sounding pretty fat. Now the next thing that could be quite cool is to really kind of boost up that kick drum. And what we can do is use the new convert drums to MIDI track. So it's very easy. Um, all we do is just right click, control click on the clip, convert drums to new MIDI track. Having a go at analyzing it. There we go. And what has it done? It's created a new track. It's put the default 606 drum kit in there. Let's just double click on the clip and let's just have a listen to it uh, on its own. So it's probably worked off the transient markers and you can see it's actually missed out the first kick drum. So what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna drag that uh, to the start of the bar. And let's just get rid of the hat and the snare. We just don't want that for the moment. And let's play that with a beat. That's really nice. It's obviously a bit too loud at the moment, so let's just bring that down, but that will sit really nicely under the beat. Okay, so the next thing to look at is this ESG sample um, for the hats. So let's just go back to our project. There we go, I'm just going to play that to you. Okay, I wanna use those hats uh, to go alongside our beat. So let's just drag that over again. Same thing, I'm just gonna go straight in and warp it. So let's just click on warp again, change it to beats. And let's just work on these hits here. So I'm just gonna go straight in and I'm going to set 1.1 there. There we go. Let's just turn these other ones off. Okay, so let's just drag these over. And let's just check the loop brace there. Turn the loop on. 
Okay, so let's play that now. Okay, so that's working really nicely. Okay, and finally for this scene, we're gonna put in this low string line that we've mentioned before. So let's just bring up the keyboard. There we go. Okay, so let's play that in. Okay, I'm gonna put that down an octave, so I'm just gonna select all, press shift and down arrow. Okay, so that's sounding great. So, we've built up our first scene. I'm just gonna grab these clips now and I'm gonna drag them onto uh, the scene below. And we're going to start adding some other elements. So let's just play that scene there. So the next thing we're gonna look at is a sax sample, and I'm not sure where this sample comes from, so I'm gonna to try to recreate it. Uh, so I'm just gonna bring up the keyboard again, and uh, it basically sounds like this. So this is a chromatic scale. That's a chromatic scale when it's playing every single semitone uh, sequentially. Uh, so let's put this in. Let's have a look at the part now. There we go. Okay, I'm just gonna adjust the timing a little bit on that. And I think this would be really good with some delay on it. So I'm just going to go to the audio effects here. And I'm just gonna to go to the simple delay. There we go. Let's just link these two. Turn up the feedback. Dry wet level down a little bit. Not too much. Now I'm gonna go back to the strings and there's a held string note here. It's just a G. Just bring up the keyboard. There we go, and that's gonna go over the top of our existing bass string line. So I can actually draw that in. And I'm just gonna drag this note here, put it up an octave, and just drag that along there. Great, so now we're gonna go on to our next scene. So again, I'm just gonna copy these over, drag these over. And we're now gonna look at the second beat, which is the Arrest the President beat. So let's go to the project again, and let's just quickly play the beat. Great, so let's just drag that over. And we're gonna go through the same process again. Here's our waveform, let's warp it. Shouldn't be too hard to find the one for this. Let's just turn all these off. That's very easy, it's found it there. So let's just hover over that, set 1.1 there. And just align this up to the grid. Two, three, four, one. So this is where the one comes. So I'm just gonna drag that over to the start of the next bar, start of the second bar, put on the loop brace, loop it. Uh, I'm gonna leave this as complex. Adjust the loop again. I think that's working really well, but again, you can see there's some timing discrepancies there. So we can sort those out. I'm just going to try dragging that second beat onto the grid there, this fourth beat as well. Let's listen to what that sounds like. It's not quite right, that loop, so let's just drag that over. There we 
Now there's a lot of low end energy on this beat. So I'm gonna roll off some of that bottom end uh, with an EQ8. There we go. Just take that off. Let's play it with a skull beat. There's a bit of a flamming going on with a the kick there, so I'm just gonna drag that over, see if that makes a difference. That's better. Okay, so that's working well. Uh, the next thing are some bass stabs that go along with the string bass line. So for this, I'm gonna to go to the library. I'm gonna find, I'm gonna start off with one of my own presets. Let's see what we've got here. This should work. Okay, this is the analog device. Just make it a bit subbier. And this is just gonna play along with the string bass line. So let's put this in. the whole scene now. Okay, so that's sounding great. We're now gonna go back to the strings and we're gonna add an octave to this pedal G. Now we're gonna look at this Lolita Holloway sample. So let's just go back to the sample. And for this, I'm going to play it uh, off a simpler. So I'm gonna drag the audio sample into a simpler. So let's just go to the instruments. Let's just drag the simple down here. Go back to the sample. It's this one here. Gonna find, gonna find a way. So let's just drag over the start point. This one here. Expand that. Just listen to what it sounds like. In fact, I'm just going to increase the level a little bit. Definitely think this needs some delay on it as well. So I'm gonna go back to the audio effects. Let's find the ping pong. Play it again. Again, increase the level. Okay, let's put it in. Okay, that's great. I'm just gonna quickly go back to the strings and just uh, take the level of this, these pedals down a little bit. Now I'm gonna add a crash. That'll do. Right, so. Just make sure that's quantized. I'm gonna make this an eight bar loop. Okay, so we're getting there. I'm just going to now copy this scene down to the next one. And then we have some more to add to the strings. There's actually a string melody that goes
Just bring in the keyboard again. Let's just play it. <laughs> Put it in. There we go, we can see it there. It's going to quantize this first note. Okay, so that's working really well. So again, I'm going to copy this scene down to the next one. And we now have another sample to put in, and this is from UFO. I'm going to do the same thing. I'm going to find a simpler, drag it on here. There we go. Drag this down. I'm sure you've heard this sample before. There we go, I'm going to start it around here. I'm going to increase the release on this. Increase the volume. And let's just play along and see what it sounds like. Again, increase the volume so we can hear it. Let's put it in. Give that a quant size. So for the next scene, we kind of have a breakdown. So the elements that we're going to keep are this skull beat, the hats, the original single ascending string line, the sax stab. So let's just play that. And over the top of that, we have some string stabs. It's very simple. In the right hand, it's just going from a G minor to a G sus4. But obviously in the bass, the notes are changing, so they're re-harmonizing re those chords. So let's just play that. Let's record it in. So let's just check those out. You can see that I'm playing slightly ahead of the beat and I've actually, it's actually missed out the first one. This is because the attack of the string is so slow. So it's making me kind of play a little bit ahead of the beat. So what I'm gonna do, I'm just gonna draw in that first chord there and then quantize it. I'm gonna copy this down again. I'm gonna add back in that kick drum and the crash, the bass stabs. And we've got uh, one more sample to put in, which is uh, the Hulse the Planets Jupiter sample. Great, and I'm actually gonna work with audio for this, so I'm just gonna drag this over to a clip. There we go. Same thing, I'm gonna warp it. I'm gonna keep it as complex. Let's just turn everything else off. So I'm gonna to try to find where the one is. It's around there. You can see there's already a transient marker, so let's set 1.1 there. Let's put the metronome on. Three, four, one, two, three, four. So it's a two bar loop. So I'm just gonna drag that over there. 
insert a warp marker, set the loop brace, loop it. So just going to the keyboard now, I can hear that that's actually in the key of A, A minor. But we're in G, so very simply we can just detune that down two semitones. And I'm going to increase the volume of that. Let's play it with the rest of the clips. Okay, so that's great. So we can now flick between uh, all our scenes here. Now there's one more section which is the breakdown section and this is where the tempo slows. It goes down to 85 BPM, we're at 102 at the moment uh, and there's a piano part. So I'm going to play that in. Uh, I'm just going to put a crash on there and you can see if you actually name the scene with the tempo on this master track, uh, when you actually launch that scene it will change the tempo. So at the moment we're at 102. So if we go to there, you can see it's going right down to 85 which is what we want it to be. So I'm going to go to the piano and I'm going to play this piano part in. Let's just go back and let's just loop that round. I can cheat a little bit by quantizing it. There we go. And we can then flick between this section. So there we have the main parts of Club to Death by Rob Dugan. Thank you very much for listening. I really appreciate it. And uh, yeah, uh, I'm sure you're going to look forward to the next session, which is DJ Shadow. So thank you very much indeed.